Good morning, everyone. It is May the 3rd, the fourth Sunday after Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And we are delighted that you have joined us for our online worship here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Kingwood, Texas. Just want to say a bit about our continued online presence and the timeline for returning to church for regular worship experiences. We are working closely in consultation with the, with the bishop's office who is uh, gathering information from all sorts of sources, um, governmental, medical, um, and uh, larger church sources to determine the best course of action for safely being able to move back into our spaces over the course of time. It is likely that we will continue to worship in the way that we are through the end of May. Hopefully we will be able to gather together in small groups at the church, maybe in small groups at home to, to watch services together. Um, all sorts of guidelines and, uh, um, and best practices are being developed. And I just want you to know that we are taking this seriously. We are, we are doing our best to, to reconvene as a community. Uh, reconvene is the body of Christ, but we are also very intentional about keeping everyone safe. So we will keep you posted, but this is in our daily work, our daily thoughts, and our daily plans as to how we are going to return to um, in-person worship. I want to thank you once again for joining us. Be mindful of our church website, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. Um, even though you are here in spirit and watching from the comfort of your own homes, we are honored and blessed and very pleased that you would take time out to worship with us today. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now join me in saying the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. For your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord? and sing the praises of your name, for you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. 
surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Is it credit to you if being aware of God you endure pain while suffering unjustly? If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the ones who judge, judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hears his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. But he has brought out all of his own he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. In the name of the living God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. This is Good Shepherd Sunday. Each year, on the fourth Sunday of Easter, our gospel reading is taken from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. In this chapter, Jesus proclaims, I am the Good Shepherd. I am the gate for the sheep. He also hints around about being the gatekeeper. But in these passages from John, we learn that Jesus loves the sheep. He knows his sheep and calls them by name, and his sheep recognize his voice. The good shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. He protects and provides for the sheep so that they may have abundant life. 
We live that abundant life. We live it now by listening to Jesus and following him. We do that by living into the new life that we have in Christ with all of the energy, spirit, heart, and soul that we can muster. St. Paul wrote, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. I say, if you have been raised with Christ, act like it. Practice some resurrection in your life, regardless of the circumstances. Practice resurrection. We practice that resurrection by following the way, the truth, and the life that we know is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is our way, our truth, and our life, but this is a way, truth, and life that operate in a very certain manner. It is of great importance that we understand the significance of Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He did not say, this is the truth, write it down, commit it to memory, never question it, don't even think about it too much. You see, Jesus is a living and dynamic truth that comes to us as a fully divine and fully human person. A person who is on a journey and in a process of fulfilling God's desires and purposes. We are people on a journey, on that same journey. We are a part of God's search and pilgrimage. We live active lives. We live dynamic lives that are constantly in process, revelation, and transformation. So we have to have a living and dynamic truth, a living and dynamic Savior to show us the way to our true home with God. Journeys are fraught with perils and uncertainty. Any great adventure is going to include its share of missteps and misadventures. I'm sure that it would probably be easier to get the truth, write it down, memorize it, and stick to it. Be done with it. But the problem is, is that, a, that a fixed static truth cannot inform or redeem or lead lives that are all about journey and process. So God sends Jesus and puts him in charge of leading people to new abundant life, to keep people safe and healthy, to rise up to defend against danger and to care for the frightened and the weak. Jesus says only the good shepherd and those who follow him are allowed to enter the sheepfold. The shepherd is recognized by the sheep. And in the same way, through baptism, into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we recognize, we hear his voice. Others may come to us, strangers with good or bad intentions, maybe even the thieves and bandits that, that Jesus talks about in the gospel today. False messiahs are about, and caution and care are definitely needed. We should not listen to them or follow them. We should not hold on to their attitudes or judgments. We shouldn't sign on to their agendas or promises. We should beware. We should beware of anything that does not lead us to love God and others just as much as Jesus did and continues to do. We maintain our love for Jesus and our intimate bond with him by doing the things that he showed us to do. Look for what lifts people up. Bless those who are, and protect those who are being put down or held back. We're called to engage with people like Jesus did. Look for opportunities to bring light into the darkness that we are encountering in this pandemic and economic upheaval. Take the chance. Take the risk to engage with people. Show them about following the way, the truth, and the life. God was sent here, or God sent Jesus here, rather, to lead us home. This is the journey of a lifetime for us. This is a real flesh and blood journey, stress, struggle, confusion, and chaos included. This is a journey 
of continual life, death, and resurrection. We journey and we process with a real flesh and blood Savior, a Savior who does not only show us the path to follow, but calls us to help lead other sheep home to him. We hear many voices at this time, claiming all sorts of things. Sometimes those voices may drown out the voice of Christ. We may hear him loudly sometimes, we may hear him softly or faintly sometimes, but we cannot forget that that voice is here. It is calling, it is calling you, it is calling me, it is calling us by name. And we have a choice. We have a choice to listen and follow in Jesus' ways, or we have a choice to move away from the ways of Jesus Christ. So a couple of suggestions about how to do this, and much of it is based on or inspired by an article I read by Jack Cornfield. And I want to give Jack proper credit, and I have a link to this um, article or this post on the credits page. Jack is a Buddhist mindfulness teacher with great insight and an uncommon purity of heart. And his words are worth paying attention to these days. People are frightened and confused. We want all of this to stop. We're becoming desperate for some signs of peace and hope. Still, we're going to have to find our way through this COVID-19 storm by going through it, journeying alongside our Good Shepherd. We have choices to make. A worldwide pandemic now adds to a host of other sources of stress around the world. How will we respond? We have a choice. Greed, hatred, and fear only bring more suffering. Can we respond? Will we choose to respond with generosity, clarity, steadiness, and love? This is a time for love. As disciples of the Good Shepherd, we are asked to hold a certain measure of the tragedy of this world in our hearts and in our prayers. We are called to hold that tragedy and that pain and respond with love. In this moment, we can acknowledge our fear and our apprehension, our uncertainty and our helplessness. Then, we can begin to hold all of our own feelings with a compassionate heart. We can put fear into the hands of Jesus and make choices that will benefit us and our brothers and sisters. This is a time of mystery and uncertainty. Take a breath. We are much more interconnected and interdependent than we would like to think. We need one another. We are our brothers and sisters, and our brothers and sisters are us. What are our best intentions and hope for this time, for us and for everyone else who is in need? Where others hoard, help. Where others deceive, stand up for truth. Where others are overwhelmed or uncaring, be kind and respectful. When you worry about your parents, your children, or your beloved, let your hearts open to share in everyone's care for their parents, their children, and their loved ones. This creates a great heart of compassion, just like the heart of our Good Shepherd. We are in this together. We are all spiritual beings having a human experience. And now our experience is on some pretty shaky, uncharted ground. Turn toward the Good Shepherd. Feel his loving awareness of our situations in your heart. He knows, he understands, he feels it because of the Good Shepherd. Remember that we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and our loving awareness of another person's situation may be exactly what they need to carry on another day. Be aware, be compassionate, be kind. 
The people of this world need outwardly focused, compassionate hearts to shine on them today. The heart of Jesus shines on us. We can be Jesus' hands and feet and eyes and ears in this world to be a part of his work that needs to be done. Let us all take our place in this great task in the name of our Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. May the world recognize the voice of his healing love and may we carry that voice with us wherever we go. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayer of the People, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may be truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our work may find favor in your sight. We have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light per perpetual shine upon them. We pray you for your saints who have returned to joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us Pray for our own needs and those of others. The shepherd of the sheep, by you the lost, are found by, and guided to the fold. Feed us and shall be satisfied and heal us and we shall be whole. And lead us that we may be with you in the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And now let us pray together in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.